In this video, we're going to be discussing a special test that's used in the assessment of first carpal metacarpal joint osteoarthritis, and that is the CMC grind test. Now let's first review a little bit of relevant anatomy here. So over here, this is our first digit. This is our thumb, and this bone in red is the first metacarpal. And the first metacarpal articulates with this carpal bone right here, which is the trapezium. And so this joint right here, this articulation, is the first carpal metacarpal joint, or the first CMC. And if the articular cartilage lining this first CMC joint begins to degenerate, it can lead to the development of first CMC osteoarthritis. And that is assessed via the CMC grind test. To perform this test, the patient will be positioned and seated, as you see right here. And the PT will stabilize the patient's hand and wrist with one of their hands. And with the other hand, the PT will firmly grasp the first metacarpal. Let's take a look at that. So with my left hand here, I'm stabilizing the patient's wrist. And with my other hand, I'm going to firmly grasp the first metacarpal. And I'm doing it with a lateral prehensile grip. It might be difficult to tell in this angle, but note, I am not grasping the phalanges. Okay? I need to go more proximal to that. I need to grasp the first metacarpal. Okay? From there, I'm going to simultaneously compress the first metacarpal into the trapezium, and I'm going to move the metacarpal through circumduction. So I'm going to compress it axially and then grind it through circumduction. That'll look like this. So there's the compression right there, and then grind through circumduction. Take one more look at that. Stabilize the patient's wrist. Grab the first metacarpal with a lateral prehensile grip, not the phalanges, and then axially compress, and then grind through circumduction. A positive CMC grind test is going to be indicated by pain around the first CMC joint both dorsally and volarly, so basically on the palmar aspect. Also note that this can sometimes be associated with swelling and pain and tenderness to palpation around the CMC joint line. This is very important to understand because we often need to differentiate first CMCOA from this condition called de Quervain's tenosynovitis, which I cover in a separate video. Now in de Quervain's tenosynovitis, more than likely they'll have a negative CMC grind test. But also, there won't be tenderness to palpation specifically at the CMC joint line. And there probably also will not be swelling specifically at the CMC joint line. These things are specific to first CMC OA. Now, one more note here on de Quervain's tenosynovitis. There are two main special tests that are used to rule that condition up, and those are Finkelstein's test and Eikhoff's test. Those tests are going to be provocative for de Quervain's tenosynovitis, as you might guess. But because of how those tests are performed, they are also provocative for CMC-OA. So you cannot use Finkelstein's and Eikhoff's tests to differentiate de Quervain's from first CMC-OA. That's where the CMC grind test comes in, because this will most likely be negative for de Quervain's, but positive for first CMC-OA. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 